Hello and welcome to another review tutorial video. Today we are going to build the Kunimoto robot, which is named after a Japanese pro wrestler with the same name. So the first thing you should realize is that this robot is much larger than any of our previous robots. In fact, it actually uses 12 servo motors. So today, rather than using the standard set, which only has 8 servo motors, we will be expanding and also be using the expansion pack for the reroll. Now I'm just going to open up the expansion pack so that you can have a look at the contents. So the expansion pack is one of the best ways to increase the number of parts you have so that you can build bigger and more complex robots with the reroll system. Because mainly the real controller can control up to 60 servos at once. So as you can see, there are 6 cube servos here in this expansion set. So getting this, you'll be able to build much bigger and more complex robots right away. Of course, if you think that the extra parts is excessive, you can buy the parts singly at the store or at our online shop. But just note that the expansion pack does not come with a real controller, so you always have to start with a standard set. Once you've prepared your standard set and an expansion set, we can start building our Kunimoto robot. So do note that this robot cannot be completely built by just using the standard set. You will at least need an extra 2 cube servos to build this robot. So once you have enough parts, we will get started. For the building part, as always, we will start with the real controller. So first, for the top part, we will be, build, we will be attaching the head. So slot in two double spacers and then one adapter joint in the middle so that the head can be connected to the middle then finish it with two more double spacers do the same for the bottom we'll be connecting the waist here so two double spacers one adapter joint and then two double spacers okay now for the arms one here and then one here. So just do the same thing as always. One adapter joint and then two double spacers and one single spacer. Okay, now we'll be connecting three cube joints at the back of the controller so that you have a back and then you'll be able to, when it lies down, it won't damage the controller that much. So for the back, for the top row, we need two adapter joints at each end and then for the bottom row, we need one adapter joint at the middle. So for the bottom, two double spacers, one adapter joint and then two double spacers. And then for this, adapter joint, three double spacers and then finally an adapter joint. So you should have something like this. So now connect the cube joints to the adapter joints by using interconnect. So once you have something like this, we are done with the torso for the cutting motor. So now we are going to assemble the legs for the Kunimoto robot. So first connect a foot plate to a normal U-joint. Need to use the interconnect here so it won't move around. Now connect a cube servo to the U-joint. We'll just use the rotatable connect as always. Now connect another cube servo to this cube servo. Use the interconnect. And then make sure the output connect is facing outwards like this. So it's facing upwards. So now connect it to a long U joint. So the bottom one is a short one, and then the top one is a long U joint. Now connect another servo to the long U joint, like this. So now this will be the leg. It has three degrees of freedom. So this will be around the hip. Then it can rotate left and right, and then this will be for the foot. Now repeat the assembly for the other leg. Now we're going to connect the legs to the body of the robot. So here we're going to use a cube servo for the waist. So when we connect it like this, the body will be able to rotate left and right. So first connect the servo to the legs. Use inner connects on each side. Then slot in like this. 
So we have the upper connect facing outwards, like this. So the torso will go here. So slot the upper connect to the adapter joint. Like this. So now we have the body of the Gunimoto robot almost complete. So as you can see, the waist can turn left and right. And then the legs move like this. So now we are going to continue to build the arms. So to start with the arm, we will start from the elbow. So just use a cube servo first and then connect it to the U joint. You need a normal U joint for this. Now this will be the elbow. Now this direction, this direction goes to the shoulder and then this direction goes to the hand. So connect it to a cube joint. This. And connect it to a claw. Of course, you can customize this to your liking. I'm just using a claw here. Just use a hand and it's the simplest one to use. So for both use the connects. Now connect the U-joint to another cube servo. You can interconnect. You want the cube servo, the upper connect to face inwards, because this will be the direction of the body. Now connect it to a cube joint. And with this, the arm of the robot is complete. Now repeat the assembly for the other arm. Of course, you it. So now we're going to assemble the head. So for this one, I'm just going to use a cube joint. You can use a, your cube servo if you want so that the head can have movement. You can move up or down or left and right. So here I'm just going to use a cube joint. So use a normal U joint for this. Then connect it to your cube joint or your cube servo, whichever you use. Like this. Then just use another interconnect to connect the U joint to the head module. Like this. So as always, the head is always the simplest. So now we're just going to put the arms and the heads onto the robot. So for the arms, it's very simple. Just use interconnects on both sides. And then just slot in the arms. Like this. So the arms will move like this. And then for the head, depending on whether you use a cube joint or your or you use a cube servo, just slot in into the adapter joint on the top. Like this, and then with this, a Kinemoto robot is done. So, a, li a little bit about wiring. So, be careful when you put on the wire, you connect the wires for this robot because for some of the parts, the degree of motion is very big. So, remember to always use extension so that the wires will be longer or they'll snap or disconnect when your robot is moving. And then, always remember to use wire clips because other than making things more tidy, it's actually to make sure that that that. It doesn't that the movement does not damage the wires. So a little bit, a little bit about the uh, limits for the servos. So for the leg, you just need to move something like this. It doesn't need to go all the way up. So leave it off at around leave leave a bit distance here so that there's a little bit of safety safety space there. For the knee, just do something like this. It doesn't need to go. It doesn't need to go all the way, although it can. So just make it like more, a little bit more than 180 degrees for safety. For the hips, you just need to do something like this. It doesn't need to go all the way up so that it doesn't conflict with the arms. And then for the waist, although it can turn all the way to the back, it doesn't have to. Just make sure it has something like this, like this, and it's okay. So for the head, it will depend on you. And then for the arms, just need to do something like this. For you can go up to around this area, and then go back to around this area. That's enough. Doesn't need to go to this area. So let's say that this is the safety space, so that it won't cause errors for the robot when it's moving. So finally, be careful when teaching a robot actions. If you sometimes if you go too far, and then the wire isn't long enough, it may snap. Then finally, this is from this is a reminder based on some feedback. Remember that the wires for the male and the female it actually has a direction. So sometimes, if even though the wires are connected, and you can't detect the cube servos, it, it's more it's most probably because that the direction is wrong and the polarity is incorrect, so you can't connect to the servos. So once you're done connecting the wires, you've completed your cleaning motor robot. So basically, the Kunimoto robot is designed to be a humanoid fighting robot. But 
the basic movements will be of a humanoid, so it can walk around and things. So I won't go over the walking concept in this video because it is exactly the same as in the dwarf for the dwarf robot in our previous video. So as you can see, it's, I'm just uh, taking the dwarf robot walking concept and then applying it onto the Kinomoto robot. So you should refer to the previous video for it. But of course, one thing you realize is that the movement of this robot is more fluid if compared to the dwarf robot because of course we have more servos so it has more degrees of freedom and can make more fluid movements for example like this so if you want to make your robot move more fluidly one important tip is to make sure that you set the timing in the real animator so that the movement will be more fluid be more natural so it won't be like totally a robot it will be more like a fighter. So now I'll show you some example movements so that you can take it as a sample and then maybe you can uh, imitate it or you can make your own very own unique movements for your Kinemoto robot. So first we have a punching action. So you can see it punches very fast and the momentum comes into shift from left to right. So these are things that you can tweak by using the real animator. So as always use teach mode to have a basic action and use a real animator to edit it. Of course, if you don't edit it, it will feel very, very robotic. But if you make it more fluent by using a real animator, you can do more actions, for example, like this. So this is just it doing like a posing or a combo or something else. So maybe if you have a friend also has a real set, you can make two robots two Kunimoto robots and then fight each other. Other than just doing punches, the Kunimoto robot is also capable of full body actions. For example, it can do push-ups by itself. So it lies down and then do push-ups. After that, it's also capable of standing back up by itself. So here it is. So it stands back up. So don't just limit yourself to maybe sport related or exercise related actions. You can also do some dance moves for example. So here's an example. You can make your humanoid robot do do some break dancing. Just an example. Of course, in the end, it can also stand back up by itself. You can also experiment. Other than just standing up when lying face down, maybe you can try make it stand back up when it's lying like this. Okay, so those are the things that you can experiment with the Kunimoto robot. Now we've actually reached the end of the review tutorial series so at the start we only built simple robots and now we ended up with a humanoid robot, a Kunimoto robot. So I hope you enjoyed it. But more importantly, we're actually working on the e-learning curriculum. So remember to follow our Facebook page to stay updated on the details. And finally, I really, really hope you enjoyed the videos and if you have any feedback, please comment in the comment section below so we'll know and we'll know how to improve ourselves. And last but not least, if you haven't bought your real set, Go get one and start building your own robot today.